In the summer of 1993, my good friend Chris Stanton and I, we received this prestigious job for the city of Jackson, painting, cutting grass, and whatnot. After a few weeks on this prestigious job, my boss man, Mr. J, invited me and Chris into the office. And he owns a ranch, and he asked us, have we ever ridden a horse? And he wanted to do something nice for us for working hard. And so I said, of course. And Chris said, of course, also. Now, mind you, Chris is from New Orleans. And I'm like, hey, man, come on, you from New Orleans. Do you really know how to ride a horse? And he was like, look, this is thug life, chump. I know how to ride a horse. Get out of my business. I said, okay, we're cool. So we get to the ranch, and I get on my horse, and Chris get on his horse. And, you know, I, I, got, I got a chance to grab the reins, and I begun on the trail. And Chris said, hold up, Picasso. My horse won't move. And I looked back, and I just said, well, just grab the horse by his ears. And he did. <laughs> what a mistake. The horse began to buck and run and jump. And Chris started to scream like, help, this horse is trying to kill me. He grabbed the horse around his neck, and I could just see the sure terror in his eyes. And the horse threw him off, and, and he wasn't hurt, but he was bruised pretty good. But, you know, thug life can, can handle that. But I was young. Don't, don't judge me. And, and Mr. J walked up and said, Chris, calm down, calm down. What made you? grab the horse's ears. And Chris, with tears in his eyes, he pointed at me. And I'm like, I didn't think you were going to take me serious, man. And, you know, so I, I, I apologized. And, 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 and Mr. J told me, get back on the horse. After his emotions got together. And he said, you have to grab the reins of the horse and not the ears. He said, the reins are connected to the bit in the horse's mouth. And that bit directs the horse to his destination. He said, that bit, if you, if you want to send the horse to the left, that bit directs him. Directs the horse to the right, it directs him to go forward and just to pull up. That small bit controls a big horse. In the same way, in your life and my life, that small bit, our tongue, directs the destination of your life. That was one great thing. Chris got on that horse, and he guided that horse, and he had a good day that day. Beloved, it even says that in the book of James and 3. It says if you put a bit in a horse's mouth, it will direct the whole horse. And it says also in 3 and 5 that the tongue in your mouth is a small member, but it boasts great things. Here's my point. The, word, the words that we use, that small bit, it matters. That, that small bit, that sm those small words can take your life very far. The words that we use, the tongue that we use, and the way that we use it, it can either bring delight or it can bring destruction in your life and others too. Our words matter. Beloved, I want to just be real cautious with you right now. Solomon has been going through and talking to his son through the book of Proverbs. And last week, we talked about the seven things that God detests. One of the first things we talked about is that God detests a proud look, which is pride. And last week, we talked about pride leads to destruction. And the second thing that God detests is a lying tongue. The words that you use should be truthful. The, the words that I use should be truthful. So today I want to talk about stop lying. A lie is false information to deceive others. When you lie, you're working for Satan. You're his main agent. It's music to his ears. You, you see, Emily, there, there, there are two types of lies. Concealment, that's when you leave information out. Falsification. That's when you present false information as it is true. Now, a lie don't care who tell it. It just need to be told. And the word of God points out, he said the, the second thing that he detests is a lying tongue. But he also said he detests a false witness. You see, a lying tongue is just lying. But a false witness is lying and it affects other people. I have seen people go to prison 
because of a false witness. I've seen an uh, incident of, of Emmett Till who lost his life because of a false witness. Just even recently watching over the news and you got people saying that they, they did not lose the election in, in Georgia and other states. And in the state of Georgia, people who work the polls because of the false witness are getting death threats. Or the politicians are getting death threats. When your lie affects others, it's more than just lying. And we have to be very cautious of that because God got a special place in hell for the false witness. But, but why are we talking about that? It's, it's like a telltale when we was kids because as a kid, we always had the telltale. Now, the telltale who said other things to get other people in trouble, were they seeking justice? Nope. Were they just trying to correct the wrong? Nope. Many times they was telling and telling on others all because of selfish gains and to have their way. The word of God is pointing out that he's serious about the lying tongue. Why do we distort the truth? Why, why do we lie? Some lie more than others. Some when they open their mouth, you're just wondering, are you lying today? If lying was a job, some people would be a billionaire today. So as we touch on the word of God, why do people lie? Some do it to make themselves seem better than what they are. There are many reasons why people lie, and we want to touch on some today. And one of the reasons is self-esteem issues. Self-esteem is an estimate of yourself. It is how you rate yourself. It is, it's how you like yourself. And self-esteem is an inside job. It's intrinsic. And you cannot give that job to anyone else. If you do, when they get mad at you, they'll take it from you. When they get what they want from you, they'll, they'll take it from you. If you're looking from, for self-esteem outside, of yourself. It's like an Easter egg, and once you take a bite of it, there's nothing inside because it's hollow. Self-esteem is your job. That's esteem that you should have for yourself. Self-esteem is a big thing, and a lot of people have low self-esteem. And this is what I've learned with people with low self-esteem. If you give them constructive criticism, they will bite your head off because they cannot take it. It, it, it's like they live in a glass house and they're protecting this glass house because it's so fragile. And whenever you give them constructive criticism, it seems like you're attacking their fragile self-worth. It's so important that we want to grow that we have to have esteem for ourselves because it's the most important thing that you can do if you want to live a quality life. If you don't know who you are and whose you are, the world will tell you who you are. How do you find your identity so you can have that self-esteem? You cannot get it from someone else. You see, Apple cannot go over and tell Mercedes its identity and how to run its business. You see, McDonald's cannot go tell Home Depot its identity and how to run its business. No one else can tell you your identity and how to run your life. Your identity comes from Christ. What is your identity? Because once you know who you are and whose you are, you start making decisions for your life. Because we live in a consumer community. It, it, it'll tell you this right here. Hey, hey, if, if you get this car, you get the girl. If, if you get this bra, you get the boy. It'll tell you everything that you should be, especially if you don't know who you are. It'll tell you if you don't have the latest and the greatest, you don't measure up. And that's when the comparison trap begins. The comparison trap will have you to feel in like that you don't have the image and you don't have what it takes to measure up. And we will embellish things 
And Christ is saying right then, that's, that's when you start to lie. Let's look at Proverbs uh, um, 12 and 22. It says, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who are faithful are in his delight. Man, when you know your identity, once you know your identity in Christ, you can speak the truth because you know who you are. Beloved, your approval comes from Christ. And many times, people have low self-esteem because they feel like they don't measure up. The common denominator of people who have low self-esteem is that they feel like they're not enough. And I want to encourage you today because the Bible says in Genesis 1 and 27 is that you was created in the image of God. You are more than enough. You've been enough, and you'll always be enough. But this consumer society would tell us different. Beloved, I want you today to look yourself in the mirror and say, I am enough. Treat yourself like someone you love because you are enough in Christ. I remember years ago, Michael Jackson seemed like he had it all, but he didn't feel like he was enough. He changed his nose, his chin, his complexion. Amy Winehouse and Whitney Houston, it seemed like they had it all, but they didn't feel like they were enough. Beloved, you are enough. You are a child of God created in his image. And don't fall into that trap. Speak the truth into your life. John Cavanaugh told me years ago, he said, uh, you could lie to anybody else, but you got a problem when you start lying to yourself. God had already, has already told you that you are enough. Now, one of the reasons why people lie is because of low self-esteem. And another reason why people lie is because of self-preservation. Come on, beloved. They, 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 there's some wrong, and they're trying to minimize it. They, they, they're trying to have some fear, and they don't want to be found out. Self-preservation. Let's look at Proverbs 13 and 5. It says, a good man hate lies. One thing I notice about a lie is that a lie is hard to keep up. You got too much to remember because a lie don't have a leg to stand on. Then you got to tell one lie to prop up the next lie, another one to prop up the next one, and you have to continue it because you don't want the lie to collide with reality. It's just too much work, and it causes anxiety. It causes pressure. It causes just you have to continue to watch out to see if you've been found out. And the Word of God is saying that a, a good man should hate lies. And then it says a wicked man lie constantly, and it come to shame. Beloved, I want to share something with you. I heard a story of, of this little girl, Emily, and the little girl uh, sat in her daddy's lap, and she put her arm around his neck and began to hug him. But she's looked across the room, and she saw her brother, who she had a grudge with, and she licked her tongue out at her brother. The mother got furious, and her mother walked up and told her to take your arm off your daddy's neck. She said, you cannot love your daddy's neck and lick your tongue out at your daddy's son at the same time. The word of God said, if you're saying one thing, but you're living another, that is living a lie. You cannot love God and hate people at the same time because that's living a lie and it will bring you to shame. When your actions and your words are not lining up, you will be shamed. People lie for many reasons. Some lie because of self-esteem issues, self-preservation, and some lie because they think they are being selfless. At, at times, sometimes we think we're sparing the feelings of others. Sometimes we think we're saying the right things to help people out. And we can say, and people, most people admit that it's a lie. But they say it's just a white lie. 
But a little lie is just like being a little pregnant. It's going to show up in a while. And the word of God condemns lie. A lie is just a lie. Let's look at Proverbs 12 and 22. It says, a false witness would not go unpunished, and whoever pour out lies will perish. We, we got to be real, Emily. We got to tell folks the truth. Your, your friend girl may come to your house and say, girlfriend, do these shoes look like Jimmy Choo? And you say, girlfriend, they like a horseshoe. You, you can't go nowhere with me like that. Let's, let's just do a little better than that. But, but whatever you say, just say it in love. Uh, uh, son, you, you may have one of your friends that, that, that come to your house with a, with, a, with a yellow shoes on and bright yellow socks and a yellow, yellow outfit on. And he said, man, how do I look? I said, man, you, you, you can't go. you like Big Bird. That's what, you know what? You can't go nowhere with me like that. Let's, let's change it a little bit. But whatever you say, say in love. Now, that's all in foolishness and everything. But what we say to people, find something good to say it, to say and say it in love, because that's what we're here for. But we're here to speak the truth. And if they can't handle the truth, that's not your issue. God has commanded you to use your words wisely and make sure that we're using it to uplift people. At the beginning of this year, I went to my yearly appointment, son. And the doctor, the first thing that he did is that he checked my tongue. You see, if your tongue is coated, that means you have a fever. If your tongue is yellowish, it means there's something going on with your digestive system. By looking at the tongue, they can tell the condition of your body. Justin Mark wrote, by examining the tongue, a doctor can tell the disease of the body. Psychiatrists can tell the disease of the mind. And as a Christian, you can tell the disease of the soul. The words that we use are so powerful, but they must be truthful. And the word of God has commanded us to make sure that we're using the words that's going to be uplifting to others. Stop lying. Oftentimes we lie because of low self-esteem. Find your identity in Christ. Often it's because of self-preservation. It's too much work to be keeping up with it, and it causes anxiety to make one lie cover another one. And then also because sometimes we think that we're being selfless. We think we're sparing somebody's feeling. Let's be truthful in love. And that's what God has called each and every one of us to do. Let me leave you with this. Begin to love what is true just for being true. The biggest reason why God hates a lying tongue is because he is the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. Jesus means loving the truth. And those who truly love Jesus love the truth. When you speak the truth in love, it would not be hate. It would not be hurt, and it would not be ruined. It would be a blessing to someone's life. Speak the truth in love and keep the promises, even though it may hurt. Because believe this, beloved, you are enough. You in Christ are the majority, and your life will be unshakable where it counts. God loves miles of truth, but he hates tongues of lies. The message today, stop lying. If you receive the message, let's give God his praise. Thank you and God bless. We hope you enjoyed the message today. It is now time for tithes and offering. There are three ways to give. You can use our cash app at the bottom of the screen. You can also text and it's at the bottom of the screen. Or if you would like, we have a drop box here at the church where you can drop off your giving. Now, if something was said today that moved you and you want to give your life to Christ, we would like for you to call us at 601-408-7156. We want to talk to you about your decision today.